Congrats on the win. That obviously was a big one in a lot of ways. Yeah, that was huge for me. I needed it. It was not just huge for like career-wise, but mental. You know, this was one like I knew I was better than him. I know how good I am. And all the camp, I was so confident, so confident just knowing. Like there's nothing this guy can do with me. But then you get to the fight, and your last fight was a loss. And you always get a thought like, am I, am I washed up? Am I done? Like, fuck, if I lose to Phil Davis, there's no way I'm getting another title fight. Like he was already champ, but he's been beat by the champ. So it was like fight week, the jitters really got to me and the, the what ifs, and I don't think I could do it. Then today it really hit me hard. Like I was shivering. I thought I had the chills or a flu all day. I was like shivering and just that nervousness. So to go out there and get that win, it was definitely a huge relief and take that burden off my chest and my back and now I can breathe again. Like enough stress that like you literally got like fever chills. Like every wow. I was in the room, closed the window, heat on. The coach came in the room like it's burning up in here. Like I'm freezing. Like what are you talking like, I thought for sure, like, did I get COVID again? <laughs> like, I didn't know what was going on. I was just so nervous. Like, if I lost, like, my only goal is to be here to be the champ. But I figure if I lost, like, there goes that. I'm let, back to the bus. Let me ask you about that, too, because on, on uh, Wednesday at the press conference, he was pretty complimentary of you and obviously saying, you know, how, how important it was for him to fight someone of your caliber. And as he's complimenting you and kind of chuckling, I noticed you're just straight ahead. You didn't really grin much. You didn't make any kind of reaction. You were just very kind of laser focused on, it was that part of it as well, just needing to be in the zone and make sure to not get distracted. It's strictly business. That's it. You ask anybody know me in the gym, when I get into the gym, everybody joking and playing. Like I joke and play, but once I start warming up, the smile stop. We focus. Mm -hmm. And when that press conference, just another part of the business trip. You know, all week, that was just my mindset. With my team in the hotel room, I could play around, but outside it was when I see my opponent, when I see all these other guys, it's strictly business. We're not smiling. We're not getting. I heard what he was saying. I was like, ah, right, you think you're up in my level. But like I said, I got to go out there. It's my job to show him he's not the same level as me. And I was focused. And the other part of that was, we did that whole press conference. Like one person asked me a question. I was kind of like, like Kel, Kel Sonnen said, like one of the most disrespected 205ers in the game. And that was just another thing. Like all these people here, and I one question for me, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him. You ain't got to like me, but you're going to respect me. And that's all this was. That was just a message. Like you might think he better than me, but I'm going to show you. When uh, we get to the end there a few minutes ago, how confident were you? I know that's what you get, guys get asked all the time, but um, I guess I was a little potentially surprised to see that it was, that it was a split. Phil seemed surprised that he lost. Uh, I wasn't as confident in the last round. You know, last round was the one that kind of had me wondering. But the earlier two, like I said, I took him down. I was landing strike. He hit me with a couple. I told Coach, he caught me with a couple of double jabs and a cross. But uh, the one kick he threw, I avoided I was actually getting initial takedowns. He was just catching me off of scrambles. He never actually shot and took me down. I defended all his shots, even though he had my back in control. Like, I was trying to get off the cage, thinking, like, I'm losing cage time right now. He's getting points. He's getting time. He's getting time. I was trying to get out of there. But other than that, I felt like I was winning. But when they said that one round, 29-28, the field, I was like, oh, shh. Bert say it. Don't leave it in the hands of the judges because they'll make you cry. But uh, they got it right. Uh I feel like you you know what's next. You got to wait for the the main event, right? But how confident are you that regardless of who wins in the main event, that that you'll be the next challenger later this year? Well, I just talked to Kogan in the hallway on the way on the way out the cage. Like, yo, Kogan, what are we doing? Like, grab him in the face. He kept shaking his head. Like, don't shake your head. Tell me, what are we doing? There's only one thing we can do. Like, there's nothing else left. Like, title, like, and just shook his head. So. That's it. And nothing else to do. I'm number one contender. Why would I go back and fight back to get back here when I just beat the number two? Just go ahead. We should have did the trilogy in the first place, mm -hmm. but they already announced the Yo fight. So hopefully Nimkov wins tonight and we can do that trilogy. It'll be big. If Yo win, or if hopefully Nimkov win, we can do the trilogy. But if Yo win, I'm prepared to get the title. And, and then do you have a time frame of when you'd like to do that? Like, do you want, if, if Nimkov's going to win, do you want to see him get it done in a hurry because you guys are on the same uh, kind of time schedule and, and you could fight later this year without worrying about when he's going to be ready? I would like to fight again at the end of this year. I would like to get two fights this mm -hmm. year, you know. But uh, if not, it is what it is. But I'm going to wait this time until they tell me we got a date before I start training crazy. Like, I'm always training. But after the last fight, well, the first fight when I got the head butt and the cut and they told me the next morning, like, we booking it right away. So as mm -hmm. soon as it's cut here, we're going back in. And so I went right back to camp and was training hard like we was going to get a fight in two months. Then two months later, they finally called me. Like, oh, he had a visa. And before you know it, I was training for like six months straight, and I was wore out. So this time I'm going to do it right. I'm going to be prepared the right way. And then what goes different, if it's Nemkov again, what goes different for you the next time? Everything. I'm going to go back like it was the first fight, mm -hmm. you know, the second fight. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not one to make excuses. He didn't – I didn't have any excuses. It wasn't my coaches. It wasn't anything. The only thing was was me. 
And then when I got to the locker room and people was texting me, oh, he's probably taking EPO. There's no way his cardio was up. He's doing this. He did that. He was greasing. He kept spinning his mouthpiece out. There's no way you couldn't grab him. And at first, I was like going along with it because it made you feel good. But I got home and told my wife, like, what am I talking about? Like, everybody pointed fingers. Everybody was like, nobody pointed a finger at me. The problem was me. Like, I didn't train hard enough this camp. He outworked me straight out. That's it. Ain't no cheating. If he did, even if he was taking something, who cares? Yeah, Rocky was all natural in the Russian was taking stuff, but he worked hard. Even though that was a movie, that was my mindset. Like, I just have to work harder. Every time I did an interview, what you got? I got to work harder. And like, I was telling him on my way over here, this camp, I worked harder. Usually, I only work two times a day. This camp, I was doing four to three days every day. There was no break. Ice bath, eat, back to the gym. Ice bath, massage, back to the gym. Sauna, back to the gym. That was it. My mindset is I will never be outworked again. And that's all I'm going to do next camp, work even harder. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Hey, Corey, appreciate your time. Uh, congrats on the win, too. So, first, uh, you're an Illinois guy. Did you feel the crowd behind you at all tonight? Oh, of course. Like, when I walked out, you can hear the pop, you know? And uh, the last time I was so, I ain't going to say upset, but I just didn't really want to come home, you know? I didn't, because the first fight, the first fight was home, I would have been excited. But the fact that I saw a lot of people on social media from my hometown saying there's no way Corey Anderson could win this fight, Nimkoff is a monster. When it was in California, then it went the way it did. And I knew if we came home, all those same people would be bandwagon jumping. Oh, Corey going to do it and come. So I wasn't excited about doing it home at that point. And I, I let that be too much of my energy throughout the camp. Like, just didn't want to be here. Not an excuse. Just I didn't want to be here. As for this time, I didn't care who, where it was, who it was. I was telling my wife, we can do this in the alley. I just got to get back to the winner's circle. Once I get back to the winner's circle, it's going to be a whole different ball game. My mind going to be right. I'm ready. I'm fired up. Let's do this. And we got there home. And today it was cool to see all the – the love. I saw my old high school wrestling coach in the crowd on the way out. One of my old football coaches from JV was here. Just people I haven't seen since 2007. I'm seeing their face on the way out. So that it definitely it made me feel good to be here. Yeah, you could feel the uh, everyone's breath was held. All the decisions was being named. And when the second your name came out, it was a, a big yell. Um, Phil Davis shot for the first takedown and you defended it well. Did you and then you shot after that. Did you have a, a particular game plan where you'd rather keep this standing or on the feet, or did you feel comfortable in, no matter where it went? I mean, my game plan is always to be a mixed martial artist, you know. The last fight I was against Nimkov, like I said, second fight, since the first fight we took him down so much, the game plan was like, we're just going to get him down again. It's going to be easy to get him down again. And we shot a lot with no combos, no punches, no setups, just shooting. As for this time, we're, like, we're not doing it again. We spent a lot of time in the boxing gym, box sparring, getting my hands ready getting ready for kicks, checking kicks, throwing kicks. If the, initia, or the initial takedown was to come from him, being able to scramble on top, and if opportunity came, when he overpunched, shoot on him. But it definitely caught me off guard at the very first punch that he went underneath me. He was gone like, like a dart. <coughs> I didn't even see it, to be honest. Like I threw the jab, and he was gone, and my body was just like, sprawl, <laughs> and I happened to get out of there. So it worked out perfect. Um, and then the other thing, too, even in this post-fight interview, you mentioned mindset, mindset. You've said it a couple times. Everyone likes to talk about the physical aspect of the game. Is there any mental preparation you do? Um, and, and especially with uh, the way the first Nemkov fight went and then the second, has your mentality changed at all uh, throughout your career? I mean, mentality is the biggest thing. It is. You can be one of the greatest athletes in the world, like, but if you can't perform when it's time to get in the cage, that's a mental, a mental block. That's a mental problem. Like, I know a lot of college athletes, like guys I would wrestle in the college in the room, that was just phenomenal. Just anybody come to the room, and they just dust them. But they get into the match, and they just couldn't put it together. They win some match, when the big match comes, they would lose. And some guys like that in fighting, like, oh, this guy's going to be a world champion. And he get out there, and he's like, oh, what, what was that performance, you know? Uh, Aldana last week against Nips, like a mental thing. That's a big thing. So for me, you know, it's the belief, not just mental, but believing in your preparation. It's a wrestling club. I wrestle at Elite Wrestling Club in New Jersey, and that's the biggest sign of the door. Believe in your preparation. Believe in your preparation. That's it. No matter what you do, you just got to believe it's going to work. It's the reason why you did it so much, hours after hours, and now you got to believe it's going to work. And I got this other thing I do called Brain Tap. They're a sponsor of mine, too. I've been using them for about six, seven years. I talked about it on the Joe Rogan podcast. I've talked about it in fights and media. It's just some, it's, it does, like, positive affirmations and other things, like you can sleep, and it's putting messages in your head. Like this week, I was doing it a lot because that mental thinking, like the what if. And one of the things was like, get rid of the negative thinking into a positive mindset. So I was going to say, it was like 25 minutes and listen to it all the time before I go to bed. And I wake up feeling good and I do a great practice. And then if I go to sleep without doing that brain tap, I wake up again with that mindset. I go, oh, would it? And I put it back on and it was over. Okay. I did it again before I came to the arena. And I was just like, all right, we here. 
<laughs> no more negativity. We can beat this guy every which way. Let's do it. All right, last question, then I'll let you go. Uh, has that type of mentality and that those different exercises that you utilize, has that been an entire career thing, or is that something you've learned as you've continued through this game? It's one thing I learned, I think, it was after the Jimmy Manuel fight. Mm. You know what I mean? When I got knocked out my first main event, I was knocked out. And I went back and watched that fight, and I know how much better I am than that. But the mindset, thinking like, oh, he's such a high-level guy. There's no way I can compete. If he hit me with that left hook, I'm going to go out. And exactly what he did, he hit me with the left hook. I walked right into it. It's like I talked it into existence. If I would have just thought, like, I can go out here and beat this guy, there's no way I would have circled into it. But I'm thinking, like, oh, I can't get hit. I can't get hit. And started circling right into it. And uh, ever since then, like, he told me after, like, bro, you're a monster. Like, we were so scared. Like, I thought for sure he was going to get on the takedown and take me down. And I did not want to be on the bottom. But then I got in there and I could see, like, you just weren't the same monster as we thought. And I just knew I could take over. And after that, it was like I got bigger. I started working on my mindset. My brother kept telling, you a beast, bro. You a beast. Ain't nobody, don't nobody train like you. That's where beast in 25-8 came from. Nobody train like you. Everybody 24-7. You 25-8. You got a different mindset. You a beast. Believe it. Believe it. And here we are. 2023, and I'm believing it. Every day. I tell myself I'm the best. Don't care what the people say. Don't care what social media and Twitter say. You can say, don't like me, but you're going to respect me. And when I get that belt, I can't wait to hear him say, oh, man, I can't believe he did it. And we did it. Congrats again on the win. Thank you for your time again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Just a quick one for me. You had mentioned how the Chicago uh, crowd really got behind you. I was just curious, would you be interested in potentially fighting in Chicago once again later this year, if, if it does happen to be that coveted title fight with Nemkov, or does the location not really matter to you as much? Location doesn't really matter. You know, for my wife's sake, I want to travel. You know, it's just, that's one of the, the perks of fighting. That's the perk of the fighting. You get to travel the world, see different states, different countries. You know, it'd be nice to do like that Dublin car or the Paris car. Like I've seen the crowds there. It'd be awesome to do something like that. But uh, yeah, you know, we've been in Chicago twice. And this is home for us, you know. It's two hours from my wife's parents. It's two hours from mine. So we come here often. We see these people all the time. Like, I love my people, but uh, I want to go see some other faces, some other accents, and learn some different stuff, some different food, and learn different cultures. That's what this game is for. And just one more follow-up for me. How do you think the main event plays out, and who do you think wins the fight? I mean, I'm thinking and I'm hoping Nimkov gets it done. I really believe Nimkov is, like, one of the top 205ers in the world. Like, I fought in the UFC. I've I'm fighting here, and I, the people I fought and the way I fought that last fight with Nimkov, like the things he did, I've never had anybody do. Nobody's calf kicked me that much. Like even though I was blocking, he kept throwing it since my third fight in the UFC, you know. So I just I hope Nimkov gets it done, and I can test myself against him, get that belt, and say I defeated the best in the world. Corey, just one from me. You talked about developing that confidence. How, how long did that take you? to do that in, in, in mixed martial arts. But that's something you just developed throughout your whole career. I'm just curious, what, how have you been able to do that? And you talked about the mindset. What have you done to create that kind of mindset where you're always having that positive thinking, positive thinking? I'm looking off in space. I'm trying to think of the day. I remember the exact day. Uh, it was 2020, helping D, uh, DC for the trilogy fight with Stipe, Stipe Miocic. I was out there. It was my first time sparring after getting knocked out by Jan Blakowicz. And, uh, I remember just being so, I was so scared to go back to sparring after getting knocked out. And I had like this whole hospital scare and all this stuff later on. I was scared, like, what would happen if I get hit again? So I didn't spar. And uh, DC talked to my coach and I went out there to help him. And I remember that first, first spar back, we went at it. We went five rounds. And I remember we got in the car and he did a little Instagram, like, yo, we just did this good work, blah, 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 Corey, my man, this dude's a beast. And then when he got off, he looked at me like, no, I'm dead. He's like, you're a beast, bro. I'm like, only person that can go five rounds with me like that is Cain Velasquez. And we see what he do. There's no reason in the world you should be losing. There's no reason in the world you should not be the UFC champ. This is when I'm saying you're the UFC champ or any of this year. Like, there's nobody out there that can do that, what you just did. Like, you got to believe, bro. Like, you are really that good. You just make mistakes. There's no more mistakes that can be made. And it was that moment. I remember calling my wife, like, yo, I just did rounds with DC. And he swore, like, I'm probably one of the best dudes he ever went with, one of the better dudes he ever went with. So yeah, I've been telling you, you like one of the greatest. Like, I've been all over. She was a GM at Rufus Sports. Like, I've seen people come and nobody works like you do. You just got to believe it. And after that, it, that instant, like I finally believed it. Like I am that good. Sometimes I just take an outside voice for you to hear. Thank you. Corey, thank you very much. Thank you.